Newcastle fans, Mick Turner and Dave Bryan. Let's cheer for them too. Stand by for the start. They're racing in the New South Wales Modified Road Championship and Barry Lawrence, the Queenslander, leads the charge into turn one, two. Well, they're all safely through that corner for the first time. Steve Robinson, the Australian champ, holding on to second. Oh, he got a little untidy there, Robinson. Then the 61 of Mick Turner, followed by the 65 of Dave Bryan. They were the top four cars at the start of the race. Sydney 77, John Atwood is spewing smoke everywhere. Oil pouring out onto his exhaust system. And I think he's going to be given the mechanical defect flag as he comes down main straight away. He'd be causing a real headache for those cars behind him. John Atwood popping the mechanical defect flag. But I don't think he can see it for smoke at the moment. Here's our race leader, Barry Lawrence, followed by Steve Robinson, followed by Mick Turner, then Dave Bryan and Ian Vickery. Bob Boxham is holding on there from Ray Tyler. And oh, there's trouble. Barry Bundy, it all has got fire up and over on top of them. He almost landed right on top of the other car, Scott Foy. Now let's see if everything's okay. Now that was Scotty Foy that went over the top, Ross. He nearly landed on Atwood. Well, I would think that he couldn't see because of the smoke going into the corner. Because that was the problem. Just as you get that little back off going into the corner, the oil spills out even more and creates more smoke. Now, he's out of the car. Foy, is he out of the car? Good. That's good to see. Scott Foy's A-OK. -okay. Who else is involved there? Graham Edmund and Barry Bundy. That Scott Foy car almost landed on top of them. Terrific incident going into turn one, two, and our track staff are getting it sorted out tonight. Now, Johnny Atwood had just been black flag coming past here. He'd been uh, black flag mechanically or mechanical defect. The lap before, he just kept going. I know that your heart's in a New South Wales title. You, you work hard to get here, but you just got to take notice of the flags that happen. That's what the marshals are here for. Yeah. They decided that the car was uh, just causing too much of a vision problem. And uh, I don't know, I, I think it may have actually contributed a little uh, going into that corner in, in turn one. And the one that really was upsetting, I think, was Andrew Basuti. Now, he uh, was behind Johnny Atwood, and there was no way knowing any of those cars behind Atwood could get past, they couldn't see. Now, we've got a real problem trying to untangle these cars at the moment because uh, Scott Foy's car, whilst it didn't land on top of the other vehicles, it is up on them on the back of the vehicles so we're going to have a bit of a problem and perhaps a little bit of a delay whilst the track staff sort this one out so 22 laps to go and barry lawrence the favorite for the race up front away he goes steve robinson tries to round him up on the outside and our newcastle boy mick turner going up on the inside of steve robinson robinson came back at him however but turner's going to serve it right up the robinson i would reckon go on with him mick take him on on the inside and he did too turner goes up on the inside and grabs second spot away take that the aussie champion he goes back to third place dave bryan holding on to fourth well i wonder whether mick turner can cause the real upset of this race oh, no, he got out very wide. Steve Robinson's got through on the inside of him. He hit one of the ruts and bounced out wide. 20 laps to go. Barry Lawrence is your race leader. But he's not going to give up either as Mick Turner. Dave Bryan's behind him and then it's back to the 71 car of Ian Vickery from Lismore. And Stuart Hearn is also there. Ray Tyler in the 21. A little bit further back and we're looking for Andrew Bazzuti who is a long, long way back in the field at the moment. Now, the ladies, we've got trouble down here coming out of turn four. We've got a stoppage. It's the uh, 71 car of Jeff Hilda, who is parked facing the wrong way. Brian White may have been involved there. And Bazzuti spun out on uh, turn two, so that might have been a blessing in disguise yeah. for the defending New South Wales champion because I think the stoppage and the marshals will point to this stoppage coming out of turn four, Ross. Yeah, you were uh, right. Uh, Jeff Hilda was the man who spun. 71 goes back into the race apparently and car 25. Brian White has gone onto the infield. He was the one that was going to be penalised. But he's gone onto the infield. 
So we've got to grid him up again. By gee, McTurner made a flying start in that restart, didn't he? We're just checking on the 20 laps to go to see that that's A-OK. Yep, 20 to go. Very well. Now they start to grid up, but we've still got quite a few stragglers. Now, are they going to let them go? I think they are. They're coming into the start zone, and we're racing. And it's Lawrence who's jumped straight into the lead once again. Mick Turner moving up on the inside of Robertson, but he fights Turner off on this occasion. Oh, Turner, Robertson's gone straight past Barry Lawrence. Boy, he was there for a moment, and all of a sudden, Lawrence woke up. But Robertson comes back on him in the inside. Robertson now, the Australian champion, takes the lead away from the Queensland champion, Barry saw an opportunity to get hold of the lead. Barry Lawrence just gave him that little bit of a chance and Steve Robinson, the Australian champ, took that chance. Now he's got out wide. Barry Lawrence trying to come up on the inside of him. Lawrence is really going to keep going out after Ro Robinson. A terrific two-car race up front and look at the Lismore driver, Stuart Hearn. He's gone up into third place. Andrew Pizzuti on his own has spun out of the race. Pizzuti, a spin out, red light. The New South Wales champ, he's had trouble with that corner all night. Even at the end of uh, one of his qualifying heats, he spun out in that corner. Now, he spun out earlier on, but he was lucky because there was another incident that uh, helped him. But this time, Pizzuti's gone on his own and will go to the rear of the field. And yep. we'll group them up again. Now, I did notice also, Ross, that Graham Edmund is back in the race. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting to note that, uh, Mike, that he's back out there. He'd certainly be a lot of laps down, but nonetheless, he's out there and he's racing. And what a race we've got up front. Current Australian champ, Steve Robinson, and the current Queensland champ, Barry Lawrence, Mick Turner and Stuart Hearn. Gee, he's uh, really making an impressive drive. The 65, Dave Bryan, the 7 of John Brown, 21, Ray Tyler, and 71, Ian Vickery, and then our... Two cars on the infield that have got to keep doing the loop-the-loop the loop with the clutch problems. The 41 of uh, Colin O'Toole and the Queensland 38 of Bob Moxham. Start. 17 laps remaining. Demolition derby coming up soon. Steve Robinson got a much better start than Barry Lawrence, but Barry Lawrence, I don't think he'll be too unhappy with that because he'll settle straight in behind the Australian champ. But it looks to me that the harder the track gets, the better Steve Robinson gets. And he's starting to uh, really work it out now. I think he might have his tyres set for a hard track. Barry Lawrence running second. Then comes Mick Turner. Now the Lismore driver, Stuart Hearn, starting to really serve it up to our Newcastle driver, Turner. And here's Barry Lawrence getting back up on the inside of Robinson. Oh, Robinson knows he's got a race on his hands here. He can't give Barry Lawrence any chance to try and come through because as soon as Lawrence sees a chance, he puts the pressure straight to Robinson. Oh, beautiful pass. Absolutely super pass by Barr. Oh, and a red light. Pizzuti's the one who's done it. Oh, Barry Lawrence would be spitting chips. He pulled a super pass on Steve Robinson, but the race will go back to the previous lap. And Andrew Pizzuti did it again. In turn one, two, and now he has called it a night. And there goes the restart. Steve Robinson and Barry Lawrence. Big Turner trying to get up on the inside of Lawrence. Then comes Stuart Hearn, followed by Dave Bryan and John Brown. Stuart Hearn going up on the inside of Mick Turner. Mick Turner won't let him come through. Hearn on the inside, Turner on the outside, and Hearn got through into third place. So now it's the three visiting drivers. Steve, oh, Barry Lawrence is gone. And bang, into him goes John Brown, tore the front left-hand wheel clean off the Lawrence car. Oh, and Barry Lawrence's night has come to an end. And maybe John Brown might have come to an end as well.
Well, he sold out. He did. He sold out on his own, but at least he probably could have rejoined the race at the end of the tail of the field. But uh, John Brown just couldn't avoid him, cannon into him, and ripped the front left-hand tyre from the Barry Lawrence car. Well, now Steve Robinson will come under some pressure from the guy who's really come out of the clouds, Stuart Hearn, the Lismore driver. Mick Turner, our Newcastle driver is up there and come on Mick, you've got plenty of Newcastle support to get up there on that winner's rostrum. Now, Stuart Hearn is signalling that he wants to circulate. So there's plenty of cars here with some problems, Ross. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, discussion going on here at the moment, Mike. The uh, lap scorers feel that uh, Bob Moxham was the guy who crossed the line in third place uh, ahead of Mick Turner. So there's a little bit of discussion going on about that at the moment. We'll just wait for exact confirmation amongst the officials because, as you always know, we in the control tower just call it as we see it. We are not official. We have to wait for the official people to discuss that. We know who's come in number one. Oh, lost him behind his... Uh, his car here at the moment. We'll try and get him over into the uh, presentation area straight away if we possibly can. He's just, just shaking hands and congratulating the other drivers. I'll move over this way. Steve Robinson steps into the winner's circle as the New South Wales Modified Rod Champion and a very happy man. Congratulations, Steve, on taking out the uh, Modified Rod Championship. We've been happy with the support of French Brothers Tyres and uh, we do congratulate you on a great win. Thanks very much. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, thanks very much, firstly, to French Brothers for sponsoring the, uh, the uh, New South Wales title. Peter for putting on the event. Uh, we started it off uh, early in the night, a bit so-so, but uh, uh, I'm very pleased the way it ended up. We, we fiddled with the car all night and uh, it's worked out great. Yeah, Steve, I suppose there were a couple of lucky breaks earlier on, particularly going right back to the time trials, I suppose, when there was that little bit of moisture down and then you got that second crack at them. Yes, well, I really didn't know what was uh, what was happening there. I, I must admit, I just sat in. And I thought, well, that's the luck of the draw with uh, with my position. Uh, I just had to accept that. But uh, whoever made that decision, uh, thanks very much. We we got back in there, and and a big thanks to our sponsors, Valvoline, uh, Wattle Spartan, Tommy Soud, Lou Dallas, you know, and Chris had come down, and uh, the two marks, my two, my son and uh, Tommy Soud's son, uh, they're coming along and helping with the car, and it's great to see them involved. And the cheese squad, the wives up the back, we all love to come here. Yeah. Thanks very much. Steve, just before you go, I've got to ask you one question. What did you think when you had to pull that fantastic 360 down there in that corner? I bet you thought things were gone. Would you believe that's the first time I've ever done that? <laughs> I, I, I've often admired sprint cars doing that, and I thought, I don't know how they do it, but I, yeah, I don't know, it just worked out. So Again, congratulations, Steve. Thanks well very done. much. Thanks, to the, thanks very much to the, and congratulations to the other second and third place getters too. Okay, now we've got second place, I think, sorted out A-OK. -okay. Can I get that second place trophy, please, uh, Bruce? Because second place has gone to another Lismore driver. Just a bit hard to keep these guys down to the car number 29, Stuart Hearn. Congratulations, Stuart. A job well done to step into second place. Uh, I did happen to say earlier on tonight that uh, you were a guy to watch when you came out in the time trials and then you went around and put egg right on my face. It didn't work. Things went a little slowly there, but you've come home in second place. Well done. Thank you very much. Been a long time since been on the track and the time trials sort of didn't help much. We haven't been here for 12 months. Uh, there's a lot of people I'd like to thank for this, um, especially parents that get right behind me with the motor race and follow us everywhere. The really good pit crew I've got. Uh, without Mick, Barry, Nigel, Warren, and Brucey and everyone over there that really helps me, thank you very much. Dallas Mills couldn't build a better engine than Dallas. And last of all, but not least, Tommy Seat for building the car and does that many hours and hours of work. If I've missed anyone, thanks for well for the car. Just before you go, uh, Stuart, I'd like to ask you what were your thoughts when you got sent back to the rear of the field? You uh, certainly didn't give up the ghost. You gave the chase a, a good one. No, he just drive a bit harder then. I had the shit spot. <laughs> <laughs> OK, he was a little upset. OK, now, provisionally, I must point out, provisionally third place has gone to the Queenslander, Bob Moxham. Now, it has now been made official. It's now official third place to the Queenslander, Bob Moxham. Well, certainly a terrific finish. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a very interesting race, very tiring race, but uh, we come down here last year for the Australian title and we blew an engine and so forth in the heats and um, we we nearly got to the feature in that one too but I mean this tonight it was uh, just all go right from the word go you know in uh, 
time trials and that sort of a format, it really makes you work for it. Really close finish there too with uh, the Newcastle driver Mick Turner right at the end. Yes, I'll say it was. Uh, I think it was only the length of the month about the, the difference. OK, congratulations, Bob, on that uh, third spot. Good, thank you. Thanks very much. I guess we've got to talk to the guy. Where is he? Mick Turner. Come on over, Mick. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our Newcastle boy, Mick Turner. Mick. Irrespective of the outcome, a fantastic race. You drove one hell of a race. Yeah, the car was going real good all night. Thanks a lot to um, Phil and Lee that was helping me out. And um, thanks a lot to all my sponsors, Logan Farms, especially Frozen Food Company. And um, the steering box went off after five laps in the race and it was really hard to hang on to. And at the end of the race, there was just no grip left and shit happens. Mick, <laughs> i got to... I've got to ask you, you know, what were your thoughts when you, uh, I mean, you grabbed the lead, it looked like a New South Wales title on the line, and then uh, around and around in the middle of turn one. I bet you just said, oh, bugger it. Truthfully, I couldn't tell you what I thought. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, another big round of applause for our Newcastle driver, Mick Turner.